Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I think everyone's gonna go wild when they see this, especially our fan base. We have Miss Jessica Castro, AKA Anti Matrix. Hi. Uh, TikTok Hi. superstar. <laughs> um, so if any any of the listeners or watchers know who Anti Matrix is, you already you're in the right spot. But if you don't know, she reads our creepy and weird true stories. I don't know. Are, are they? You think they're all true, or you think people just send you fictional stuff sometimes? I really hope they're true. I like our uh, our motto in our community is "We believe you." So yep. I like to. I prefer to believe all of the stories, and I really hope that someone wouldn't do that. Um, right. You know, you the story know. But I. You I, do uh, never know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Based on your TikTok channel and reading, or not just your TikTok, you have YouTube. Um, I think you're on Instagram, right? All these different and things. Facebook, yes. Yeah. TikTok so, is my main, though. Based on that, you read these true stories and terrify us all, and you had an idea to compile them all into one place, a book. So yes. I'm going to throw that up on the screen here so that you can. Everyone can see it. And then tell us, how did this come to life? How did this happen? Uh, the book actually was not even my idea. I guess I kind of had it in my in the back of my head that maybe, oh, I, maybe I could compile some of these into a book. Um, but the fans actually during the lives a lot were like, hey, you should put these into a book. And they kept saying it. So I was like, you know, that is kind of a good idea. Um, and then I started really thinking about it and I started talking mm. about it on the lives. Um, and I actually had someone reach out to me from a publishing company and she said that she was in my live and that she like loves me and that she wanted to like hook me up with the publishing company because they wanted to potentially do the book. Um, so I got in a call with them and, uh, the rest is history. I guess we, I went with that publishing company. They're the ones putting it out. It's, um, mm -hmm. Union Square Publishing. Yeah. I thought those pretty cool it just kind of came to me they, they're, they're a really cool publisher i've worked with several of their authors in the oh gosh in the last year i've had them on the show um really fun fun books coming from that publisher so obviously you got to be part of that um yeah did you have a huge hand in creating the, the book itself or it was just kind of everything that you compiled together or how did it work so um, it was it's it's basically a compilation of there's around 80 stories in the book. Um, and it's basically a compilation of some of the best stories that I had received. I always say up until I put the book together because I keep getting I feel like I keep getting better and better stories. And the book was compiled yeah. like a year and a half ago now. Um, so it's it's a, a compilation of those. Obviously, they've been like slightly edited just for grammar and um make sure everything makes sense and they flow well. Um, and then I also wrote like a little introduction just explaining about the book and um, like slightly going into a few of the different themes that you might see in the books. So if people don't really have um, a background in some of this stuff, they have some ideas, um, you know, like what is a, a skinwalker or, or a Wendigo or a mimic or those kind of things. But the main part of it is really just the compilation of the stories. Right. And um, yeah, I was actually going to ask about that. I read it. Um, I have a few oh, of my did. favorites. I did. Um, <laughs> I scared the hell out of myself every night. I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm like, my husband's like, why are you reading that before bed? <laughs> I can't stop. Um, and then, of course, I have terrifying nightmares. So, yeah. Um, no, I'm so sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, glutton for punishment. But um, I think one of the ones that, that hit me the most was um, the woman had, she went into labor and then she supposedly had a C section, but then it really actually never happened. It's like she watched yes. herself die or. I yes. was like, whoa. That I've was a crazy two, one. That was a real, no, I have chills thinking about that one. It's a really good I one. Have, <laughs> I've had two C-sections, so that terrifies me. And I oh did my goodness. have an emergency with one of my children. So terrifying, yeah. Really? Kind I'm of like, you're okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> but that one, when you read something like that and you're remembering your own experience, it's terrifying. So yes. Um, I prefer when you read them. I watch your lives. And like, oh, you do? You should say hi next her. time. <laughs> Let's just let her read because, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, but 
when someone else reads it, like, I guess the tone is not as creepy. Your voice is very friendly and you're fun, you know? Um, yeah. The little, the little sing song that you do. Can you do it for us? What is it? I love that. Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it takes away from some of that, like pure terror. Like when you're reading it to yourself, you mean you're imagining voices in your head or the scenario. And, yes. Yeah. So. That is true. I, I'm I glad mean, I can make it maybe like a little less scary. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was another one that I really liked about the the demon dream demon. That one was good. Too. Yes, that actually is from yeah. one of my. She's one of my moderators, and now she's one of my friends. And she has oh. she's had several stories on. Um, and she has she has a crazy life, and her husband. Wow. They both have had just oh, fun. Crazy. Yeah, like, her husband's like, actually one of her husband's stories is in the book as well. He's the oh. first story. Uh, okay. The Allen story. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a good one. I, I mean, it's hard to say which ones were my favorite, but those two terrified me. <laughs> yes. They're they also very them. well written. They're both very good writers. Yeah. So that does make a oh, difference maybe, too, you know? Say, yeah. yeah. The more details and stuff, the better because yeah. you can visualize it. Right. So what made you, what, what brought you to the internet to do this? How did it all start? Like you just... Woke up one day and said, I'm going to tell people stories on the internet. Like, how does that <laughs> No, happen? actually. Um, so I had a TikTok account for uh, maybe like a year or something. And it was mo mainly spiritual because I am also a very sp uh, spiritual person. So it was mainly <laughs> spiritual content. And then I started to get into stuff like I was doing some Mandela effects videos and some weird stuff like that. And then I just personally was reading some Glitch in the Matrix stories online just myself. And I was like, this mm -hmm. is really interesting. I feel like my followers, my fan base would like that. So I made a video of those. Um, and everyone really, really liked it. So I made another one. And then after like the second one, people literally started asking me, where can I send you my story? Like, can I send you my story? And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. I'll, I'll read your story. Um, mm -hmm. and then people started sending them. And then I, I kept saying, you know, you can send me yours too. And I just, now I literally have like thousands of emails. That's awesome though. I know it is awesome. At the mm -hmm. same time, I feel so bad. I would, I really want to get all this, as many stories as I can out there. And I physically can't. Is, all is this those. your, your full-time thing, what you do all day or is your, you <laughs> no, a, I wish, right? I wish <laughs> I maybe know, one right? day this would be my full-time thing. Right. I do. I, I am a content creator. That is my job, but I mainly make like ads for TikTok and oh, okay, okay. Um, stuff like that. But you know, my content does make me some money, but not enough for it. This could be my full-time job. Not, not really yet. Right. I get super it. Super cool. I would love that. Right. No, I get it. I I've been doing the podcast for about four years. We have a great following and lots of fans that are interactive, but definitely not my full-time gig yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. yet. <laughs> yet. Um, but that's that's awesome. So you where did you get your first story when you read it online? Did it, was somebody sent uh, it to you or someone email uh wait are you talking about the, the video I made originally? Like, yeah your very first when you first decided to do this. Go the online, glitch in the matrix somebody, ones? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I first started reading those, I was literally just I just Googled glitch in the matrix stories. Okay. Well, maybe it was one of those you know how you go to Google sometimes and they just, there's stories that are just yeah. there. It was something yeah. like that. And I was just reading it and I was like, oh, this is really cool. It was just like a random, mm -hmm. it wasn't anyone's in particular. Okay. And I can't actually remember the first story somebody sent me. I can't remember okay. the first one. It was okay. so long ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. How long have you been doing this? Mm, I'm going to say maybe like two years or so. Yeah, I think I, I, I got lost in your TikToks a couple of nights ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> There's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, like, wow, she's got a lot. Um, I do have a lot. Do you have, um, I guess, a favorite? Favorite genre, first of all. Favorite genre. like Favorite genre. Horror, paranormal, aliens. Oh, my goodness. I really, it's, I'm so just in life in general, I'm, it's really hard for me to pick favorites. I don't even have a favorite color that changes all the time. <laughs> um, but whenever people ask me, what's my favorite story that I ever read? I always say I can't pick a favorite, but I, I always come back and say that, uh, the first one that made me really scared where I couldn't even finish reading it at night. I had to finish it in the daytime and then mm. make a video in the daytime was part 13. It's, it's also in the book. Um, it was the one about the woman who goes with a friend to look in an apartment mm. and there's like this dark closet and then they end up like back in their car and it's like this crazy terrifying that so that was the first one that i literally could not finish it when i was reading it because i got so scared so that was like my 
That one I, I actually got scared too. I had to put it down um, in my day life. <laughs> in my day life, I'm a realtor. So um, oh, I do are. go with people to show houses and I have yes. seen many weird things. But that one, like, again, when those stories hit home a little bit, you're like, oh, okay. Yes. Put it down for a minute. Um, yep. Yeah, I need to come back to that one. So in daylight hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it was technically the realtor that was the whatever he was so, yeah, so <laughs> i'm not that kind no not not me i hope not you're not luring people into freaky <sighs> closets no no <laughs> um but uh well maybe if he's cute no <laughs> um as far so, as like a favorite genre mm -hmm. I I feel like that changes, you know, sometimes I'll get like a lot of one kind of story. So then I'm really into like right now, I'm really into the alien stories are really mm. cool to me. Um, Cause I think I get a lot of the same, like we get a lot of like quantum immortality stories and timeline jumping stories. And we get a lot of premonition stories. We also have sweet stories. There are some sweet stories in the book that are like heartwarming, not so I've scary. Seen a few, yeah. um, but I think right now I'm really into like the alien stuff. It's very interesting to me. I like, saw one of your TikToks and um, it was an alien story. She had an alien child and later on told the child that you were part alien and i was like mind blown yeah i would be an alien <laughs> yes it was so i i actually get quite a few stories about like hybrids yeah, i don't know if you saw the too. one that was um it was the alien therapist i don't know mm -hmm. if you saw that you saw that one yeah, where the person like alien. literally has a their therapist said that they were a, a hybrid which is so mm -hmm. cool because yeah. i fully believe in all of that i'm gonna go find that therapist like i want to be an alien i know <laughs> i want the cool ship <laughs> yeah but now I, I think right now our our world is fascinated by aliens so i think those that's a really popular topic right now yes um, i think it's because it's you know disclosure is happening and it's just happening mm -hmm. slowly um mm -hmm. and we'll just want more information like we all know obviously because when they came out everyone was like okay aliens we know okay we know, you know what I mean? no one was really nothing new <laughs> you're just exactly. confirming it. right exactly so i think we just want more information people are like we know can you just can we see an alien or can someone mm -hmm. come out and be like hey it's me <laughs> right you know and in my belief i guess here where we are in the u.s that may have happened multiple times but we're so like tunnel vision we might not even noticed it Somebody That's might true. be yelling in a crowd like, hi, I'm an alien. And we're like, oh, my God, he's just crazy. Like, so Yeah, what a wacko. Crazy, <laughs> right. But yet on the flip side, we're like, show us the aliens. That's so true. I never even thought of it like that. You're yeah. so right. But yeah, here in the U.S., uh, we tend to be more tunnel visioned and um, opinionated. I guess that's a nice way to say it. Yes. So we look at people that say things, well, not you and me, but majorities will be look at people that say I'm a hybrid or I'm an alien and they'll discredit them. Like you're exactly. Crazy. So yes. it, again, those very same people will say, show me the aliens. Well, mm -hmm. probably but they won't believe them. Right. So I mean, that might be me if I think about it, right? <laughs> if, you, if I'm like, Hey, show me the aliens. And someone's like, Hey, I'm an alien. I'm like, mm, but are you an alien? You like, know, are you crazy. Do you need pills? I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's possible that we've bypassed it, you know, ourselves. So absolutely the same thing with the paranormal, I believe. I love your, the paranormal fun stories too. Cause yes, for now, but people are like, show me the ghosts and you know, the, those uh, investigative shows where they're mm -hmm. recording and they're like, show me the ghost and everybody's looking forward, but behind them, who knows what's really going on. That's Things true. could be falling and you're not paying attention because you're looking for specific things and not. Yes. Sure. So it's very true. But, it's positive to have um, your, you be able to just read people's true stories and with no bias, no judgment. Yes, and that's no the whole thing. And it makes me really happy. That's why, that's honestly, I love reading the stories. They're so cool and fascinating, but also just the best part of it to me is I, I'm so happy that I can like help so many people feel seen and feel validated because mm -hmm. so many people have these experiences and they won't even talk about them because maybe they've tried and they've gotten judged or they've gotten ridiculed in the past. No one believes them. Um, so I love giving that to people because I really feel like it's part of what I'm supposed to do is to help people awaken to the fact that there's more than just this little earthly body that you're in right mm -hmm. now, you know, and it makes me so happy that people People will say, oh, I heard this story. And I was like, oh, my God, that happened to me, too. Like, maybe I should share my story. I'm not crazy. No, you're not crazy. 
um, a story that outside of the one we talked about with the crazy realtor, but is there something that just stands out, whether it's in the book or not, something that stands out that just terrified you to your core? Anything that it's terrified me to my core. That's a good. You're, know, you're like I'm a little numb to it all now. Nothing. I, mean, I read. I do read so many that it does take me right. like a little bit more to get scared now because I'm so used yeah. to them. Yeah. Uh, things with the dolls always really scare oh, yeah. me. That's I That's weird. Do not like dolls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and you know what? When ghosts are doing anything in the kitchen, if there's a story where the cabinets weird. are all open or stuff is clanging around in the kitchen, I don't know what about that is, but that really freaks me out. <laughs> me too. I think it's just with the malicious intent. Cause like, why did you just open all the cupboard doors? Do you oh know how long God. it takes me to shut them? <laughs> <laughs> Especially with a man in the house. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, it's weird when that happens. I guess, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I guess kind I would of... think that it, nothing would really terrify you too much anymore. That's not <laughs> true. There are, you'll notice if you do watch my, if you do watch mm -hmm. my lives, if I start covering, going into like a cocoon, yeah. like my shirt or my blanket or something that I'm really, like, oh, yeah. I feel like I'm hiding. <laughs> you feel bringing that into your world, talking about it so much. Do you feel like in your own personal life, you have seen any paranormal things as a result of um, sharing these things? I think they might have been um, attracted to you. Actually, not really. Mm -hmm. um, I think I people ask me that, but they also ask me if I'm scared I'm going to bring stuff to right. me. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But I do keep myself in my home very protected. Like I always okay. protect myself. I'm always cleansing myself in my home. So, um, and using my words, your words are very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not really scared of that because I haven't had anything crazy happen to me. Like. I do think that maybe reading the stories has made me more comfortable with it, though, because if things randomly do happen, if something falls or I'm whatever, I'll just kind of talk to the if it's if it is you think scared it at that point. Yeah, whatever I think it is. I'm like, OK, I'll, if it's the daytime, yeah. if it's at night, don't come near me <laughs> <laughs> during the day. Everyone can come talk to me, all the spirits and the aliens at night when it's dark. No, thank you. <laughs> right. No, I, I at night. That's and I don't even know why I pick up scary books at night <laughs> have it like, literally you can i can just feel my husband's gaze on me like what are you you're just why are you doing out. that like, stop it yep <laughs> you can't help it <laughs> i'm okay with these but i don't really really watch scary movies that much because oh. that they really scare me um and the last scary movie i watched we actually did like a watch party um with some of the fans and we like watched mm -hmm. the fourth kind and that oh, movie okay. really scares me <laughs> and, and i couldn't movie, sleep i just did an episode on that a while back um that movie wasn't even real it was like a documentary that they made to appear to be real it wait was, it wasn't real what about like the the real footage after no it's show? like the blair witch project it's not real so I my don't podcast, know if it helps me feel better or not. Yeah, it's my <laughs> podcast generally, I, I bring on a lot of guests, but I generally am a single story podcast. So each episode has a different story. It could be paranormal, could be urban legends. In that one, we did Nome, Alaska, where those disappearances were happening. And um, that movie was based on the actual real disappearances, but there okay. was no reports of actual aliens. Unfortunately, yeah. So okay. the movie is not real, unfortunately. I, and it did make me feel better after I watched it. <laughs> it I was guess creepy. It, I guess it makes me feel better. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but I couldn't I was, after I watched that. I literally made my fiance sleep with the lights on. And then he yelled at everyone in my community when he, he was like, don't let, she's not allowed to watch scary movies anymore. You can't right. let her watch them again. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> um, yeah, not at nighttime. I mean, I could do the daytime, but at nighttime, I will wake up all night long. Just every Isn't that so funny? Because it's it's just that it's dark out. It's the same thing yeah. as the daytime. What's the difference? <laughs> I think some of it's because we can't see what's what's yeah. for us to see in the day is very you know bright, open, wide. In the nighttime, you look out the window and you can only see so far. That's true. So it's that is like true. the unknown. I'm closed. looking at my windows right now. You're like, like, oh no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, I'm a big window person, so during the day, all my blinds are open. I love the natural light. At nighttime, nope, they're buttoned down. Don't even <laughs> use the, don't go near the windows. <laughs> I'm so, so yeah. bad. I have them open all the time. Like my blinds are oh. always open. I don't know why. 
that's okay. Yeah, but that probably led leads to our fears at night. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> so you have a really cool merch shop that I was scrolling oh, through. And thanks. If yeah. watchers and listeners, I mean, this blanket is everything. Glitch and yeah. chill. Yeah. <laughs> I need like it. I'm gonna order it after this. <laughs> Oh, the glitch and chill. Yeah, there's actually like those are the um the featured things, and then like when you scroll down, there's actually the designs, and you can like get any of the stuff with any of the designs. But people do. I will say the blanket is the best seller. Um, everyone really likes. They said it's cozy. So thank you, Jamie. Oh, yeah, I think it's the same service I use for my merch. But yeah, so that's a good good quality blanket. Um, yes, but. Yeah, that was fun. I was like, what? I need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, let me see. You've got your website here, too, which is actually, like, I don't know, mesmerizing. I, it moves, you guys. It oh, moves. it's just the the, it's just like an active little background. Thing. I know. I loved it, though. I was just stuck on it. I couldn't stop looking <laughs> at it. <laughs> like, wow. Um, but, yeah, all the links are there and yep. um, all the different things that you do. And I noticed you do a lot of, like you said earlier, ads for uh, looks TikTok. Like, yeah, products and whatnot. So that's fun. Is that how you started out with TikTok or is... Uh, I just made an account, honestly, just to start sharing some mm -hmm. spiritual stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then I got invited to a program called the TikTok Shop Creative Challenge. Um, oh. And that's to make ads. You don't see those on my page. Those just go on the, the FYP. Mm -hmm. They're like ads for mobile games. And so I still do right. that. That's like one of my main sources of income. Oh. Um, um, and now I do do TikTok Shop as TikTok Shop as <laughs> well. <laughs> um but yeah, but yeah, on that, on the link there is where you can uh, get all my stuff and my, uh, mm -hmm. you can, well, you can pre-order the book, but the book is coming out next week or you can just mm -hmm. get it when it comes out. I already got it and I read it. <gasps> terrified myself, terrified <laughs> myself, literally. I actually sat out one, one night, it was nice. I'm in California, so it's like super like, it's the armpit of hell, it's hot. So <laughs> I, it was nice one night and I sat outside my little porch swing and I was gonna read it. And I'm reading a story and I'm like, what was that noise? What was that noise? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go in the house, the aliens are gonna kidnap me. <laughs> so, <laughs> something, so yeah. Um, some of the stories are, are terrifying. Like, I mean- Some of them are very scary. When I was recording the audiobook, actually, the woman who was like on the computer helping me, she's like, how do you read these? <laughs> Right. And not be scared all the time. And I'm like, no. I don't know. I and just do. To know, I think the more, more terrifying, terrifying part of these is that somewhere in the back of your head when you're reading it or you're listening to you, um, you know that they're real. You know that this is a real person that experienced yeah. this. And yes. I think that heightens your level, your fear, you know? Yes. Absolutely. I think it makes it worse for me knowing something is real. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, this person actually had this experience. That's crazy. That's so right. scary. Like, so the fourth kind was terrifying for me, but knowing it wasn't real. <laughs> right, so it makes you feel a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> um, at least one more day where aliens aren't going to swoop down and kidnap us all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, hope know. They, I think if they do, I, I hope that they're, it's like fun. Like, it's like Disneyland up there or something. I mean, <laughs> my fiance wants to he's like let them come i want to hang out with them be like hey come on come down to earth like what can we do what can if they're like everything? angry you know what if they're angry i want them to be happy and cool and hey let's drink a beer and that's how i, I want, want them, them too i feel i go back and forth about it because on one hand you know uh if they were mean and destructive and angry they have way better technology we would have been oh, yeah. dead you know what i mean yeah. like we would all be dead so I feel like, okay, maybe they're not mean, but then you hear so many stories of the different races of aliens and like the reptilians and then the grays are not, not very cool. Some of them are cool, but some of them are not. One of my producers on the podcast, um, he's like, oh my God, it's like uh, gang, gang wars amongst aliens. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, do you think they claim colors? We're the grays and you're the whites. We're yeah, the colors are probably green. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I wonder though if if there are aliens, if there are in fact different species, and are they friendly with each other, you know, or or is there a lot of animosity between the different species? Yeah, so, I don't know. I firmly believe that there's many different species. I mean, our universe is so vast, there's no way mm -hmm. that there's not, you know what I mean? But if they get along or if they have like beef with each other, 
I don't know. They maybe wonder though. You know, or they all so far evolved that they don't. You know, they look at us yeah. and they're like humans. They're so stupid and mean to each other. They're always yeah. Like, I, I think they look at us like little little ants that we're over here <laughs> fighting each other, and they're like, "Oh my god, they're doing it again!" Jesus, oh, look at so <laughs> cute. What are they doing? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> they probably watch. You know, the game The Sims. They probably watch us like that. Yes, they like, probably do. They probably like, what do. What is wrong with these guys? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard that I, maybe that's one of the reasons. Like, we don't have a lot of their technologies because we they they're like they're gonna do bad stuff with it you know you get to i think we would too i mean not maybe of course others, i mean not us yeah. but the government yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um among like your alien stories um anything that's close to home like any story that alien wise that you have found that was near your home or maybe happened to a friend or you know no, um, not with alien stories. No. Um, um, think, though, maybe you are. um, not close to home, but I will say that uh, I learned about when I learned about the hat man and mm. then like reading a bunch of stories and stuff, I put it together and I've told this to some of my followers too. I put it together that when I was younger, I did use the Ouija board when I was like 12. We used to play with the mm -hmm. Ouija board because you, you yeah. buy it from the store. It's like a toy. It was the game board, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but we always used to talk to somebody and he said his name was Hat all the time and I didn't understand it. And then like afterwards putting it together, I was like, oh my God, was I talking to like one of the Hat Men? Wow. <laughs> the Hat Men? You never know. Maybe. You never know. I don't uh, know. Maybe. Um, we also debate on if that's like a whole species or if it's, it can't just be one Maybe guy. they're aliens. I wonder like how sometimes like maybe guests that'll come on and they'll debate like the paranormal and stuff. And then I'm thinking, well, could paranormal and aliens really be like one thing it could. like you know could could ghosts or demons that we see be like aliens or i mean i guess they I absolutely think, could i also with religion but because <laughs> i don't want anybody coming for me but you know you never know so. i also think a lot um one of the theories that I like subscribe to heavily is that mm -hmm. when we're seeing ghosts, we're actually not seeing, they're not actually ghosts. They're just, um, we're seeing like into another timeline, like someone's crossing over from another timeline or dimension. And that's what you're mm -hmm. seeing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, cause really we don't know. No one actually really, I mean, people, some people say they know, but who knows who actually really yeah. knows, you yeah. know what I mean? So really it could be. Yeah. I think if anyone really knew they would utilize that knowledge to gain something or get ahead. So yes. I don't think anybody really knows. I think it's just Probably. people thinking they know. But mm -hmm. I think there was one of your videos on TikTok where um, there was a timeline jump. And um, I, can't wish, I can't remember if she was on a ski trip or something. Them. Yeah, there was one where she was on a ski trip, I think. I think I remember that one. Yes. Oh, yes. And she all of a sudden there was no one around. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And she was like walking and walking, trying to figure out where she was mm -hmm. going. And she was freaking out. And then she finally saw like a, like a light or something that she walked into. Right. And then she was like, back, mm -hmm. back to where she mm -hmm. was. Yeah. I, I, I think that's the most terrifying thing. I, I saw that when I was like, Oh my God, I've traveled a lot in my daytime career all over the country and I'm alone a lot. So I'm like, what if I just zoned out? What if I timeline jump? What am I, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> My husband slaps me around a little. Like you just read too much. Get off the TikTok or whatever. <laughs> like, okay. But yeah, you could be timeline, timeline jumping all the time. Yeah, Some people think that you're jumping timelines with every choice that you make. You're like switching around. You know. I think I think that's a good uh, possibility. Every decision yeah. we make leads us into a different path. So, yes, yeah. I, be I actually just. Oh, I don't think I posted it yet. Mm -hmm. mm, no, I did. I did literally just post it. It was like someone else's story, someone else's video that I was like showing the video. And she talked about something that happened to her. And in whatever happened to her, she like literally saw two paths and like footsteps. And she had to like make a choice, which is Ooh, crazy. Scary. <laughs> scary. Scary. I know. I don't know. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd probably just sit down and cry. Like, I don't know which way to go. <laughs> yes. You know what else really in the same kind of vein, you know, what else, the stories that really scare me are when people get stuck in a loop. Oh my like, God. Yeah. Have people like on the highway and they're just going in a loop. I literally don't mm -hmm. know what I would do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go crazy and scream. I mean, I don't, that would be horrible. 
oh my god i think i would end up trying to like drive my car off a cliff or something i just mm -hmm. i don't like what would you do yeah um, no and it makes you wonder like is it like i read something somewhere a long time ago about being like in a highway trance like when you're driving yes yeah when you like zone out and you that, yes and so they end up just going around and around like i mean i don't know like that'd be terrifying <laughs> It would be really scary. <laughs> so back to aliens. Um, so it's such a popular subject. Why do you think certain people are chosen and maybe abducted or have these experiences where the rest of us, like myself, <laughs> I didn't get to go. Won't come hang out with me. <laughs> exactly. So like, why not? Yeah. Um, I don't really know. I'm wondering if there are like a lot more hybrids than we could ever realize. So maybe a lot of the abductions are actually like check-ins because I've heard of like someone being a hybrid and they, the aliens would come check in and bring them out for check-ins once in a while. I don't know if it's that. Um, I don't know if some of us, you know, I've also believe some of us were star seeds and we're actually from other planets and we're incarnated on earth right now. So maybe they're, coming to visit or they're coming mm -hmm. to see how that's going. I don't know. Um, it's weird. What do you I, think? I, I, I think you're right when you talk about check-ins. Um, we okay. did the Berkshire a UFO incident like about a couple months ago. And um, the majority of the individuals that were abducted in that story were children. Wow. And they were, they, these children were in different towns, did not know each other but all saw each other on the ufo on the ufo and, and that is so you cool. can catch our our show on that spotify youtube wherever you yeah. know um, we're on all the podcast platforms um we're audio on apple podcast spotify uh amazon music you know iheart so you can listen to the audio but it's the berkshire incident and um, there were one or two adults that were kidnapped in the, and they were all kidnapped in the same time frame on the same day Really? Yeah. So, and to, the, to this day, um, Berkshire, Massachusetts, I believe, has memorialized the location of where there's a bridge that's, I'm not going to give up too much of the story. You have to go listen. Okay. But there is a bridge, and the actual state has um, memorialized the bridge with a plaque. They do believe there was a UFO abduction. Wow. The, the location. Um, the group of children obviously are now older adults and they do try to reunite at least once a year. So they all remember it? Uh -huh. They didn't know each other, but later once this, once they were returned to their families, um, one child was several miles away. She was in a car with her parents. And then the next thing she knows, she's miles away. Wow. So, yeah the walk home that is so that definitely sounds like a check-in right if it's a bunch of kids yeah, exactly that's what yeah. my first thought was like this these are star seeds or hybrids or something and they're they're checking on them yes. none of them reported any pain probing anything like that okay. they all just remember like what they described like i guess back in the it was in the 50s what we would describe nowadays as a yoda like figure Okay. It was very nurturing to these children. So, okay. Um, yeah. Well, so, nice. very, very different kind of um, abduction because usually you hear about experimentation going on on humans. So, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely think that you're onto something when you say check ins because I want to be one of them, though. <laughs> Are you hear that aliens? Pick Go get me, Anne. She wants me. To, yes. She wants to <laughs> I'll wave at you guys from the ship. Like I finally made it. <laughs> I'm a cool kid. That sounds now. like a crazy story. I definitely want to listen to that. Did yeah. you like did you cover this? Did you have anyone on talking about any of it? No. Um, that would have been so crazy. No, we um <laughs> Like I said, we do, it's just a storytelling podcast for the most part. Okay. And a lot of times um, authors will come on because, I don't know, to, why not tell their stories too? So, um, <laughs> but just mostly a single story, just me telling you the story. I am also a published writer, have multiple oh, books yeah. published, but I write my own scripts. So I try to do them like in a nice timeline fashion. Okay. So you're going to know where it happened, when it happened, who it happened to. And, um, you know, so that's, that's great, um, though. That's perfect yeah. for storytelling. Yeah. So I don't know. We 
bring on guests just for fun. But um, yeah, so I think though aliens, I think that's the huge, huge topic right now. But all of yeah. your stuff, I loved how the book, let me throw this book up there one more time, how it had um, the chapters are lined out, like very, very distinctive. And then you have multiple stories under each category. And yes. it just made it easier because I wanted to kind of skip around. I wanted, to, I've read the whole thing, but I <laughs> wanted to skip around because I was like, ooh, that looks good. Or this one looks good. So, yeah. um, you know. That actually wasn't me um, because, you know, I've never put a book together. Oh, ever. Yeah. Um, so the publisher was like, hey, I was just going to have them listed as stories just in a row right. or whatever. And she's like, hey, it will break it up. It'll be easier for the reader if we maybe have these Absolutely. in like sections. So I was like, all right, you know, that sounds good. Um, so she helped me just break them into sections. And they're not even, it's not like the stories in a section are related because they're really mm -hmm. not. Um, right. They're just kind of, yeah. And it just kind of breaks it up easier for you to read. But you can skip around if you want. You don't have to go. Right. Around. I skipped around <laughs> just based on the titles. Yeah. It's over here. Yeah, titles uh, caught my attention. No, no. Hold on. Are you petting somebody? No, I have a crew member here. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're on a little break right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you take your time. My uh, cord fell out, so we had to... I was like, help, help. <laughs> I saw you doing this. I thought you were like petting a dog like, or something. No, I was like, a cord fell out. Help. <laughs> Usually they don't pay attention when they're around. So um, we just kind of have a few people here and there when I'm recording, just in case. I'm not the technical wizard, you know, so I have to have a little help. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but um, yeah, so what were we discussing? I don't remember. Aliens and the book and... My oh, the, story, the way they were broken up. You said you could skip around. They're not like um, related. I didn't, just... I didn't want to show uh, visuals of the inside of the book because I know that it's not out yet. So I just wanted it to be a secret. <laughs> but um, I really am, was impressed. It's very well laid out. And um, just to have that many stories in one place, you could pick this up at any time when you're bored or lonely. And, yes. you know, it's something yes. to do. And, um, and then I have the uh, the audiobook that I recorded. I think it's like six, over, a little over six hours. Oh, wow. And it is my voice. So yeah. it will make it a little less scary, like you said. <laughs> yes, definitely. How was that experience? I actually really that? liked it. I was very nervous because I had never done it before. Um, mm -hmm. But it was great. I It was really easy. I did it from home. Um, I feel like my... I'm blurry. Sorry. Uh -oh. Um <laughs> I did it from home and I just had the person from Macmillan Audio is the, who did the audiobook. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had uh, Gina was on the computer with me and she like set me up whatever. And I would literally just read mm -hmm. and she was recording and she would stop me if like, hey, let's redo that line. Hey, say that again. Or which mm -hmm. happened several times. <laughs> yeah. Is there someone mowing their lawn? <laughs> yeah. If you listen to my, my podcast, just the single stories, um, there's a lot of effort that goes into that because it's like, crap, I'm going to go back and read yep. that whole paragraph again. What the hell did I just say? Yep. <laughs> yep. It was really, the really yeah. frustrating thing was honestly, people were getting landscaping done around me and she could hear it. Even mm -hmm. I had lands. I know, I know you don't know where I'm pointing, but yeah, all I the way, it. like on across the block from me, someone was oh, no. and she's like, I can hear that. Then I had my cats outside the door. She's like, I hear your cats. And I'm like, oh, oh no, <laughs> go like put the cats downstairs. Um, mm. But besides that, it was fine. I literally just read it. It only took us about two days um, wow. to record it. We six did for like six, five or six hours at a time oh, of wow. recording. And then we had um, a day of pickups, which was just, she had gone through the whole thing and, um, she just had little things that maybe didn't sound right. Or maybe there was like a noise discrepancy and you had to like redo those lines. And I was, those went really fast for me because when I'm recording my stories, when I do my TikToks, mm -hmm. I mess up a lot. So I'm used to yeah. recording and then having to like redo that line redo 17 it. times and I can keep the same mm -hmm. uh, pace or however I was saying it. So that was fine. That's but it was really fun. Yeah. I was super I nervous about it, but I loved it. I can't believe you did it in two days. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Did you ever like get kind of like, oh my god, I'm I need water, I need a break. 
I was really nervous I was going to uh, because she mentioned, you know, make sure you have like tea and water. And she was telling me certain things like an apple is good and mm-hmm. whatever. And um, I was thinking, oh, man. So the whole like morning before the night before I wasn't talking, I told my fiance, I'm not going to talk. Like, no, nope. saving my voice. <laughs> but then it was honestly fine. I think it's because I'm used to I go live and I go live for like four to five hours at a time. Oh, wow. And that's how long I was recording for. True. Yeah. So I was like, all right. And I'm talking constantly on the lives. So it wasn't so bad. By day two, by the end, my throat was kind of like a little bit scratchy, but mm-hmm. it was good. I thought it was going to be worse, but it was yeah, good. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I could do it. My episodes are like 20, 30 minutes long. We just tell the story and that's about it. And uh, I don't, I don't know if I could speak that long. <laughs> so- <laughs> With practice, you're amazing. You're not an alien. <laughs> I am an alien. I don't know why I talk like a robot. I'm a robot alien. <laughs> Maybe that's what we think that they talk like. I don't know. When uh, I was younger, like the depiction of aliens is very much different than it is now. So yes, we kind of did look a little robot-like back in the day. Yes. Uh, they pretty much. I just assume that they don't speak. I just assume they speak telepathically. That's my. I, I agree. I think that they've evolved from words and noises. So, yes. And Um, I feel like uh, all of the stories that I read, I don't know if I recall any story in which they were not communicating with the person telepathically. It's always like I just heard it in my head that they were saying this. It was never a a voice. I think in most episodes where I've done aliens, that's the case that there's no actual words communicated. Yes. Um, It's just simply like a telepathic thing, you know. But then you'll um, hear those ones where sometimes they'll say they heard like a clicking noise, you know, like in that movie mm-hmm. Sign, like the, mm-hmm. which is interesting. So I wonder if they do have maybe their own thing they use sometimes, yeah. but then how do they communicate their thoughts to us in a different language or whatever language around our world that they're maybe in? Maybe they, they give us that. I don't know. They use their powers. <laughs> <laughs> they use their alien use powers. Their powers. Yeah. Just so interesting to me. I want alien powers. <laughs> yeah, me um, too. <laughs> I know. I think, though, that, again, a huge topic right now. Um, I think I just saw something yesterday. Um, I, I don't I do not do politics. I'm not speaking anything other than I know that Trump had come out and said that if he takes office, he would be releasing more details, more footage. Oh, is so he that's trying very, to get people to like him again? <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe, but, but what's, what's interesting, whether, whether he's voted or not, or what, whatever, is, is there, is there really info there, like for someone to share with us? That's what they, I, it's wild. I don't know about the sharing. Yeah. I, they, I'm I sure they have so much information, you know, like yeah. when they came out, however long ago, and now we know that half the UFOs people see are probably just government, um, made mm-hmm. ones with the alien technology right. that not from the crash chips or whatever um so who know i'm sure there's so much information i, I mean who knows it could be just a political thing where he's just like vote for me i know aliens. He's just trying to get in. <laughs> who knows not getting, you know? again not getting into politics but no we don't get people into that. you know like him again because um there's there's <laughs> uh uh i guess this this season we're going in our fifth season and um, our team has talked about going behind a paywall, so we can talk about politics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, not like we don't really choose sides. We have like our own opinions. I mean, I should just be president now. <laughs> you could be, be president. My vice. You and the aliens. Yeah. Yes. Together. But no, um, we have our own thoughts and opinions on how it should go. But um, everyone does, and that's okay. Yeah. Everyone's entitled to yeah. their own. Opinions. I don't know. People are stuck on one side or the other side, and there's no in between. There's no, like it's it's either this way or that way, and that's just so strange to me. Like, yeah. and I think that's why aliens look down at us. Like, what's wrong with you? You know, mm-hmm. that's why they won't come here. Um, there's always some gray area in every situation. There's always something in the middle versus like only one or the other side. Yes. And the violence that has ensued because of people's decisions on either side is unreal. It's Just crazy. Unreal. Yeah. Um, no, you're right. That's why the aliens aren't hanging out with us. Because I'm positive it is. We're I mean, idiots. <laughs> the human race. Yeah. The human, you're not uh, us. But. Right. Yeah. But uh, no, if I, I don't know if they have something that they can do to help us, then maybe send it down. Please send it down. <laughs> yeah. Please help. <laughs> um, but again, with the stories, the 
told your stories that you tell, um, it's very interesting when you see someone say, I was abducted, okay, and then their detailed story, and you wonder why that person, like, is there any similarities to this, these people that are abducted? Yes. Do they, all, do they all like green or do they all eat wheat cereal? Or <laughs> what is it? What is it that there is? Is there a common denominator between all of the people that are abducted? Yeah. I do feel like also we do see a theme in places. Like there are certain places mm -hmm. where a lot more abductions happen. And I've heard, I don't know how true this could be, but I have heard people speak about maybe that um, uh, whatever kind of aliens, I don't know, have maybe uh, like an agreement with the government where they're allowed to take certain people from like X amount of people from this place or something like that. I don't know how tr true that could be, but that is something that I have heard. No, right. No, I've heard that too. And the other thing I noticed was because um, I'm here on the West Coast, there's a lot of sightings in and around you know, um, Las Vegas, um, the Mojave Desert. And yeah. I always wondered, like, why? Area 51, New Mexico, Roswell, all of those are desert, high desert, sand everywhere, hot as hell. And you wonder, like, why there? You know, because it's an open space? Or do you possibly need something from there? nutrients That's in the in the sand question. something related to the heat could be the cactuses are they harvesting something from those locations yeah. because if you look it up there's so many sightings in the desert you could just would, say it's open space but that's the only thing i would think of honestly is that it's just open space and it's away from people but mm -hmm. i never i never thought about you bring up a really good point i'm not really mm -hmm. sure now that's a good I, question I, is there I, something I, there I think we did a couple of years ago, like a round table episode where I had like the producers and director. And there was this book where uh, something about humans are from Mars or something. And this guy was talking about all the alien stuff and I will fight to the death. <laughs> I tell you they're harvesting something is my belief in that area. Because from the, in the, from the area. I wonder mm -hmm. what it would be. I don't know, but I wonder I believe it to be true because too many sightings from way back in the forties, even. Yeah. So, you should do a little deep dive and like figure out what's in all the areas yep. and kind of do one of those walls go. with all the not far strings. From me. Yeah, not, <laughs> <laughs> right. Pieces of sand in bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to travel there and go check it out. I actually did uh, during my day job several years ago, travel the whole, um, Southern California, all the Death Valley, Mojave Desert, all the way down towards Vegas, Needles, California, just all wow. dirt. It's just for the realtor uh, thing. Um, no, I, I I work in the world of real estate, but I do something else. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, that is within that world, and I travel heavily. But that area is very creepy. Uh, creepy. Really. My husband and I had gotten a hotel room in the Mojave Desert and we had been, we had arrived very, really late at a rental car. Didn't know where the hell we were going. It was dark, got lost, went to our original hotel. They were like, oh, you're, you've been canceled. Your reservation. Ugh. So we stay oh, in this no. tiny little, it looked like a murder motel. Like you were going to get murdered. Like, <laughs> I went to take a shower and in the windowsill, it's just covered in, in sand. Because the winds are so strong out there, the, yeah. the struggle and the sand gets in and very oh creepy. You get up the next morning and you're looking around like there's just hills of sand everywhere. It's really just, scary. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see maybe where, you know, they would land there for that reason. But I don't know. Too many sightings, too many stories. Maybe they're coming for something in that dirt. Do you think they have like bases down there or something? It's a possibility. You know, there's a story. I don't know who told it, but that they're under these area 51 or something that there's levels of bases and they keep the different species of aliens there. And Oh, like in the different levels. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I read that, but somebody had written some researcher had written it and it was like, well, maybe. <laughs> I've heard like so many things. I've heard that uh, they live underwater i've heard that mm -hmm. they uh oh that's why they have you know how they changed it from ufo to like uap now yep. because it had to include uh sea craft mm, yeah and then i've heard that like the moon is like a base for 
it's like a place where alien, all different alien species and us come in and out and whatever. I don't know. These, all these crazy know. things. I mean, <laughs> that's possible, but I mean, how does that fit in with, you know, Elon Musk's idea to colonize the moon? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's already colonized. So <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe one side, maybe like one half is colonized and then the other half. He's, I have no bought, idea. He's gotten some real estate there. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was strange. Like, want to colonize the moon hmm. and people are actually waving their money at that like pick why? me when you do it pick me for why thinking, why do you want to go there i don't know but i'm thinking didn't anybody watch the submarine issue do you remember the yeah. last time one and they exploded and why it happen would twice? You, it happened yeah, twice yeah and but you want to go to the moon <laughs> in a tiny little oh wait we still have astronauts stuck in space right now wait what the, they're I don't stuck know about this. Station. It's been for months. They're stuck on the space station. They went up what? on a mission and something went wrong with their craft. So they're stuck up on the space station. They can't come down till February. How, do they have enough food? Well, it's... they're sending like little whatever they're called up, not with people, but just. Oh, they're sending like a little care package with, basically? Yeah, to the space station. To the yeah. space station. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's crazy yeah. i have no idea how many people are stuck up there you a man and a woman yeah that i was so terrifying. like i always i see stuff like that and i was like in 2024 <laughs> we can't come up with a better like what why until you, february what what's what's something the... about they can't get things uh corrected or fixed and they're gonna come down with another crew that's going up there or something. Oh my so God. I would Just, be furious. They were supposed to, I think it was an eight, eight to 10, maybe 15 day mission or something like that. That was it. Stuck. Yep. They how long stuck. ago did they get stuck? Like how recent is that? So I have to look now, but I think um, listeners, viewers will know um, astronauts stuck in space. And then recently, just the other day, they heard a noise um coming from the starliners um, oh i saw a tiktok on that yeah and I didn't know that was creepy because if you ever watched that one movie was an alien or whatever <laughs> that sounds like the same noise i it's actually didn't watch that movie thing. so i don't i don't recognize the noise but it is a scary noise especially if you're there you two people in space yep. alone yeah, the two people let's see they were the vastness of space terrifies me in general i would never want to go right? there because it's the one movie with Sandra Bullock where she accidentally fell. Oh, it's like off. Interstellar or something. And well, she's I just floating it. away into space. And I was I I don't have anxiety, <laughs> but that movie, that scene gave me anxiety. Yes. I'm like, screaming, holding the pillow. No. Oh my god. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine just floating until you die. Like that's, that's it. I feel like you only that. float for Cause don't you freeze? Like once you get a, I think so. Or, or I mean, you'd run out of oxygen or oh something. My God, that is. Well, I guess That's if you run out of oxygen, you just kind of fall asleep. I would no. Hope. I I would hope that you wouldn't like. Is that wrong? Some... Are you just gasping for air? That's terrible. Uh, exactly. You see. <laughs> oh my God. Um, let's see, they're gonna stay on ISS, the International Space Station, until 2025. I can't find. Where they went. I think, okay. was I, was just, I think it was in July. But I was yeah. just wondering how many, like how long they've already been up there and now they have to stay until February. Yeah. I'd be furious. Mad, mad. Oh, <laughs> that video that I saw with the noise, I honestly didn't know if it was real or not. You know, you can never trust any yeah, like, videos like that. I have, I'm always I like, I saw it. It terrified so me thinking, I remember flashing back to the movie that had, I don't know, maybe it's not the movie Alien. It's one of the alien kind of movies where that almost identical noise happens right before they invade. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh no, are they going <laughs> to like, like, damn it. Do they, they have cameras at least? Could we see them yes. invading? If yes, okay. there are cameras on there. Um, I don't know if they're running that camera 24 seven for the public. Probably not. Possibly, maybe if we visit NASA site, I don't know. But I know that, that during that call, there was footage that they had played, so. Because they called down. Well, like actual, like visual footage? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't see that. I have to go look. I just it was, heard it. I know there's just different pieces of footage out there of them floating around and, you know. That's so scary. Yeah, it is <laughs> perfect. so scary. I, I don't know. I guess these guys are not new. They're veterans. They've done, they've been in space before. So they're cool with it. 
I don't know if they're cool with it, but they seemingly <laughs> aren't making a big production at this point regarding. Okay. Well, good stuff. for you guys on the space station. I, hope I would lose it. <laughs> right. Well, Why at least there's two of them. them. <laughs> they can chat with each other. Yeah. Right. Can you imagine though? Like there's no, there's nothing there. I mean, I'm sure they don't take books and you can't watch TikTok. And I mean, like, <laughs> what do you do all day? Like, I know. Stare at the data on the screens, listen to strange noises. I mean, oh my God. I don't know. They're, are they on the actual space station mm -hmm. or they're like yes. in a, the craft that they took there? No, they're in the space station. In the space. How yeah. big is it? Big in there? I'm asking you so many questions about the space. No, I, I know. No, <laughs> I don't think it's big, big, but it's big enough to hold a few people, you know. Okay. Um, international is, I think, where the one that we share with multiple other countries when they go. Okay. And I believe that they are coming down with another country. I don't remember, don't quote me, listeners, don't come for me. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that what I read was that, or I saw it in the news, they were coming down with a different crew, perhaps from another country. Okay. Because so, we may not have something going up. So, oh my God. I know. That was what, what I saw. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> in 2024, I mean, we're talking about colonizing the moon, but we can't even get our. We can't go get our guys. Yeah, we can't get them home. That's just bizarre to me. So, self driving cars and floating skateboards, but they're stuck in space. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think that uh, listeners and viewers can see that we favor aliens. <laughs> yes, we do. We have chatted a lot about aliens. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think it's just, it's one of those things. It's just big right now. Um, yes. But paranormal was fun throughout this book, the stories. Um, shocking to see how many people experience so many different scary things in the world. It's crazy. And the I, like I said, I literally have thousands more stories in my inbox. It's there's, so many. I never, I'm at, like, I understand, you know, I knew that a lot of people had experienced things, but I didn't really realize that level, yeah. you know what I mean? Of how many until people were like, oh, me too, mm -hmm. me too. And I'm like, okay, everybody. Yeah. I okay. feel like everything that, everything that happens, every story I read, especially for I'm on live, because we get um, like mm -hmm. immediate feedback, there's always like, oh yeah, that's happened to me too. Oh, okay. Like there's, wow. you're not alone. If anything's mm -hmm. happened to you, there's at least one other person in this okay. world that it's happened Makes to. it amazing that you have this because I mean, people can go in those comments and feel heard and not feel like they yeah. belong in a loony, you know, place. Yes. <laughs> like, hey, somebody's listening to me finally, you know? So. Yes. Yeah. But, um, I will say that TikTok is the nicest. We have the best community on TikTok. I can't speak for I, Facebook and Instagram. People get kind yeah, of. Yeah, I agree. Because TikTok for me is the same. I have really great supportive followers. It's always fun. Instagram and Facebook. I mean. I it's get like random messages on Facebook, like private messages, and they're like, "Stop! I'm like, stop! stop what? 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 What do you want? Would you stop? Like, oh my God. <laughs> <there's> <laughs> weird stuff." You're like, "Huh?" Like, <laughs> um, Instagram and Facebook, they um, they confuse me a lot because yeah, strange comments. Um, I, I honestly I, don't even. If I'm being honest, I barely ever read the comments on Instagram and Facebook. I just want, do YouTube and TikTok because that's like the yeah. real community is there. That's right. not mean. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad because there's a lot. There are a lot of people in those communities as well, but, but there is just so much weird. negative, and you can only yeah. see so much negative as like a creator. It's I woke up this morning and I don't I don't know why I looked at the comments on Facebook, but someone had commented, "I am mold." I'm like, what? Wait. They said, I, I am, like, mold. speaking about themselves, I am yeah, mold? Yeah, that's what? what he wrote. I am mold. I'm like, what does that even mean? Okay. And the, the video <laughs> was uh, <laughs> the paranormal story about the Ammons haunting the demon house, sack baggins, all that. And I had posted the YouTube on Facebook, and everybody's liking it and commenting, and this person's like, I am mold. <laughs> That's just a troll. I don't even understand. I, that even makes I, sense. I stared at it for like five minutes like, huh? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. So Facebook confuses me a lot. Yeah. I prefer TikTok um, and YouTube, definitely. Yes. So. Same, but same. you, everyone watching, listening can, ooh, wrong one, can go to any of the social media platforms. Yes. Maybe Facebook and Instagram works for them. 
or yes. whatever TikTok. Um, it looks like you, is that Discord or is that? Yes, um, we do. Okay. We have a Discord. We have about mm -hmm. uh, over two thousand people in there. It's okay. a great place to hang out with people. Okay, so you go to any of those and follow Miss Anti Matrix, aka Jessica. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then support her and listen, and listen, sometimes your lives go on for a while and I just prop you up while I'm doing dishes. We do dishes together, just so you know. That's really nice. Oh, you and I, you and I yes. do dishes together. Yes. Oh. You're telling your stories on TikTok and I just put you there in the window. So I appreciate that. A lot of people actually do that. They listen to me while they clean or they just exactly. kind of like put me on yeah. the background. You're yeah. doing a lot of household chores with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Sometimes you need somebody. I do that too. I'll put somebody's live on and just like... Right. Do, do you have a schedule for your TikTok lives or? Um, I do not because I am a divorced mom and I have uh, like rotating, a rotating custody schedule. So my custody changes all the time. Mm. Like for example, I was supposed to this week go live uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Well, not today because we're doing, wait, was today Thursday? Wait. <laughs> not today. I was supposed to go at least Wednesday. Um, and then I unexpectedly had my daughter all week, so I wasn't able to. So um, that is actually one of the reasons people like the Discord so much is because I have an announcements channel and I'll tell people oh, okay. when I'm going live. I'll be like, hey, I'm going to go live tonight. And we also start our like story list in Discord. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's like the main reason a lot of people get the Discord is to know when I'm going live because mm -hmm. I never really know. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I could because it would be better if I could have a, a set schedule. But right, but that's okay. It builds anticipation up for your that's fans. True. So <laughs> you guys will just have to go follow her on all of the social medias, and that way you can stay in the know of when she's on. Yes. And then in the meantime, go back and scroll through all of her old videos, listen to all the old stories. So it was a pleasure to have you, and I yes. hope you come back on if you're ever interested in. A storytelling um, collaboration. Ooh, fun. Make I'll a listen to you story, tell a story and then we can chat about it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Love you. Um, yeah, that sounds fun. So, and you guys, let us know. Is that something you've listened to? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> this was super I, fun. Thank you so yes, much for having you're me. You're welcome. I will talk to you again soon, hopefully. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. <laughs>